Good morning from Galilee. This is Amir Salfati. <clears throat> it's um, 5.30 a.m. here. I'm on my way to work, but um, so many people wrote me and asked me if I can give you a short update on what was going on with uh, the um, situation on the Gaza border. So it all started basically um, on Friday when um, there were some the usual demonstrations of Palestinians on the Israeli Gazan border. You have to understand that the Gazans are in desperate situation. Um, they don't have enough electricity for more than a few hours a day. Their governments are corrupt. Uh, the millions are being used for terror tunnels. Um, their president uh, is purchasing new aircrafts, new uh, private jets and um, these people are desperate so they come and demonstrate on the Israeli border and under this guise of, of a demonstration what they did was uh, they planted an explosive device and attached it to a flag knowing that the Israeli um, patrol will eventually get to that flag and that's when they will detonate it and sure enough uh, Saturday which is yesterday it's still Saturday in many of your uh, countries right now. Uh, an Israeli patrol around 3.30 p.m. was uh, approaching that flag. And in the attempt to remove the flag, the uh, explosive device was detonated. And uh, four Israeli soldiers were wounded. Two badly, seriously wounded and two uh, lightly wounded. They were flown in helicopters to the uh, hospital. But... Uh, as usual, when Israel is being attacked, Israel retaliates on the spot. We don't even wait. Um, they have to understand that there are consequences to their um, actions. And uh, we attacked a Hamas um, observation uh, point and um, a watchtower. Um, and later on, we attacked um, six more targets amongst uh, amongst them there was a terror tunnel that you know israel developed a new system we already know where they dig the tunnels and when they're about to cross to the israeli side this time we decided not to wait for them to cross to the israeli side uh, the terror tunnels begins actually in the heart of um, residential uh, communities in other words uh, they are digging tunnels right uh, surrounded by kindergartens and schools and houses knowing that if Israel were to retaliate then there will be um, casual uh, and f uh, fatalities all around and Israel can be blamed for it. Well we destroy that tunnel uh, alongside with some other targets such as a uh, weapon factory and a training camp and other things and in Hamas for the first time in, in the last months or so, admitted publicly that they fired anti-aircraft um, um, fire at the Israeli F-16s. And the reason why they did that, they normally try to stay away from giving any public, um, some public announcements such as that. But um, there is a, a wave around uh, the area in, in a wake in the wake of um, the um, shooting down of the Israeli F-16 by the Syrian uh, SA-5 rocket, there is a way, uh, I, I guess the Arabs decided that uh, it is possible after all to hurt Israel and um, let's just do that. Now, you understand that um, um, obviously it was a, it was a problem when a, a, a Syrian rocket uh, explodes next to an Israeli aircraft and causes it to to uh, crash. But um, there is no way you can win a war for the last at least eight ever since 1982 without any damage or any casualties. Uh, in fact, the fact that we never had any incident like that since 1982 or 1983 it is already something uh, quite remarkable. But, um, you know, when, when you're always on the losing side, you're all, you will hold on to the little tiny victories such as the shooting down of the Israeli plane and you will create a, 
an ethos, uh, some sort of a, a, a great story of wonderful victory. And so now every little Arab pulls a gun and shoots into the sky and he wants to be a star just as uh, and shooting down Israeli planes just as the Syrians did. Not to mention that the shooting down of the F-16 caused two-thirds of their anti-aircraft batteries to be destroyed and, and many more damages. And not to mention that Hamas right now suffers from some uh, casualties. But um, for them, as long as they shoot down or hurt or, or do something, it's a victory already. Um, the situation escalated when a, a, a group of four Palestinian Hamas people uh, tried to infiltrate into Israel from the Gaza border. We killed two of them, and two of them were badly wounded. And um, as a result, the Palestinians fired um, several rockets, and one of them landed on a, a roof of an Israeli house in one of the kibbutzes around and miraculously never exploded. So no one in the house uh, was injured. It, it was a great miracle. Nobody. Uh, normally we destroy those rockets while they're flying. This was never destroyed, and um, yet it never exploded. Wonderful. And the last, the last uh, of of this round of violence is um, that Israel actually sent a second wave of uh, airstrikes that destroyed 12 more targets just about an hour ago. So altogether, 18 Hamas targets were destroyed, uh, two Hamas terrorists killed, two um, badly wounded. And the second wave of uh, red uh, alert, those air raid sirens, was actually a false alarm, probably uh, triggered by these Israeli airstrikes. So for those of you who are holding this uh, app about the red alert, about the Israeli um, alert of air raid sirens and all of that, probably in the last year or so, 80% of those sirens were false alarms. So, and I know that you guys care about Israel and you pray for Israel and it's fine, but you have to understand that not every time there is a siren that goes off, um, something really happened and I'm not running immediately to re report anything because there was nothing to report. Um, in this case, the first air raid siren was a true one and of course, as I said, one rocket fell on Israeli house, but the second one was a false one. So we hope this is the end of another wave uh, of uh, attack from the south. Remember, it all started with the Palestinians planting an explosive device on the fence and that is device uh, was detonated um, right next to Israeli soldiers and four of them got wounded. That's how it all started. Israel has no interest in any escalation. The Hamas leadership in uh, Cairo told the Egyptians two hours ago that they have no intention for any escalation. So probably this is the end of it. But it cannot be the end of it because uh, the people in Gaza, more than 2 million people, are without electricity. It is freezing cold right now. It's the winter. Look at how warm I'm dry. And um, instead of getting the money to pay for electricity and to buy electricity, such as a normal country does, um, they just build terror tunnels and terror facilities and buy themselves luxury airplanes. So... Uh, I guess uh, when America decided to cut their budget to the United Nations Relief and Work Association, which means indirectly Palestinian people who pretend to be uh, refugees, um, the Germans picked up uh, the ticket. And uh, so there will, there will always be someone who is f going to fund them, cause them not to work, cause them to prefer terrorism and cause them to be always the underdog um, and always to cry for help. Um, it's about time that they take their future in their hands and they, they start taking care of themselves. Um, you know, when Israel pulled out of Gaza in 2004, um, we left for them all of our greenhouses and all of our agricultural facilities and everything. We, we wanted them to do something with it. All they did is turn them into terrorist uh, training camps and launching pads for rockets uh, fired at Israel. So, you know... 
it takes two for, a two for a tango. If they don't want to be helped, then no one can help them. I believe that um, <clears throat> Palestinians are very frustrated with the fact that nobody helps them um, uh, continuing that same rhetoric of Israel is the problem. People understand that in the bigger picture in the Middle East, Iran is the problem. E people understand that even now this wave of terrorism was instigated by Iran. You have to understand the Iranians funneled and channeled millions of dollars to the Gaza Strip so the Hamas will start some problems with Israel and, and embarrass Israel. The Iranians are engaged in an effort to destroy Israel, period. The closer they get physically, the more real it is for us. And this is why we intend not to allow them to entrench themselves in Syria or Lebanon. When it happens, we act. In the with Gaza, we've been watching that happening and um, we're acting upon it. So this is basically what happened over the last mm, 12 hours or so. It started with the explosion, continued with Israeli retaliation, continued with the Israeli airstrikes, followed by their rocket, followed by another Israeli airstrikes and their attempt to infiltrate through the fence. This is it not too serious. We're used to it. Um, we hope it will not escalate into something bigger. We hope that a, a war is not, as usual, their solution for a problem. And um, we still keep our eyes on Damascus. We keep our eyes on Syria. We truly understand that this place is now a place of almost 10 different wars fought simultaneously on Syrian ground. There's the war between the Kurds and the Turks. There's the war between other Kurds and uh, the Bashar al-Assad people. There's the war between the, 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 the rebels in the south. There's the war between ISIS and, and the rest. There's the war that the Russians are helping the Bashar al-Assad in the suburbs of Damascus. There's there's so many mini wars in Syria right now. And in between, Iran is trying to take advantage of the situation and enrich its presence in Syria. They're not using uh, ex exclusively um, Iranian soldiers per se. They're using Afghan and Iraqi Shiites that are cheap labor for them to bring and let them get killed in the, in the battlefield. And they micromanage. They have their own generals and commanders. And basically, they command the Shiite troops that they brought from afar um, to do the dirty job for them. This is it, guys. Um, again, I'm not that concerned about the Gaza Strip at all. Uh, and I've been saying for the longest the time, the Palestinians are not an existential threat on Israel. Um, nowhere in the scriptures I see a Palestinian state. I do see an effort of the world to divide Jerusalem and to divide uh, the land of Israel. We know that the Lord will judge any nation that did that, according to the prophet Joel, chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. However, again, the nations that are mentioned in the scriptures in regards to the major wars that will come against Israel do not include the Palestinians. Uh, these are nation, powerful nations such as Turkey and Iran and Russia and Sudan and Libya. That's not the local Arabs. And the local Palestinians, just so you know, those who live in Judea and Samaria and Gaza, as they did in 1948 when they joined forces with the, the um, attacking coalition on Israel, um, and as they did in 1967, um, they will probably do the same in the coming attack when they will join forces with Iran and, and Turkey and Russia. We can see right now that uh, they got a cold shoulder from Europe, they got a cold shoulder from um, America, and they got a cold shoulder from the Sunni moderate countries such as Saudi Arabia. And the Palestinians right now run into the open arms of, of Turkey and Iran. We see that happening every day. So I'm not surprised if when that attack will take place, Palestinians will take that side. Um, but again, by themselves,
they're not a threat. Israel, if Israel wanted, we could have destroyed them, you know, probably long ago and within a few hours. We want to live in peace with them, next to them, and not instead of them. They don't want to live in peace with us, next to us, but instead of us. The Bible says in Psalm 120, um, long I want to uh, I, I want to live long or dwell long in peace um, with the people around me but when I am for peace they are for war peace is the most common word in the Israeli songs in the Israeli books in the Israeli literature we want peace and the Israelis in their quest for peace are going to do a fatal mistake of even following the Antichrist but the other side is not into peace. The other side is into peace by peace. The other side is, is, is still, you know, they live in denial. They live in, you know, complete fantasy that one day the whole land of Israel will be theirs. Palestine for them is not the West Bank. Palestine for them is not Gaza. Palestine for them is the entire land of Israel. And, and for them, Joppa and Haifa and Tiberias and, and Tel Aviv, th these places are theirs. They, they, don't, they, they think it's a joke to only think that they will be satisfied with the West Bank and Gaza. They will not. So that's a little short update on what happened. Um, thank you for all your prayers, all your support. And um, I'll keep you updated if there's something serious and that is going on again keep your eyes on damascus keep your eyes on iran keep your eyes on the very bleeding humiliated russian bear right now they're losing people they're losing money and they're losing control over many parts of syria and they cannot afford that and so if anything, Israel should fear more of what Russia is feeling right now and not what the Palestinians are feeling right now. So again, these are the things we need to keep our eyes on. And uh, if something happens, I'm your boots on the ground. I will definitely update you. Sometimes I don't update immediately because I'm waiting for things to develop. So there will be substance um, and more clarity in my in my uh, reports, uh, knowing that these type of situations are back and forth for hours, I waited until things will calm down and then I just reported that. Um, <clears throat> but again, if there is something else that is going to happen and I think you need to know, I will definitely report that. I'm on my last two days with Governor Huckabee um, and then I'll be home for a few days and from here, uh, continue to two more tours of churches that have been guiding and leading their Israel tours for many, many years. Grace Chapel from Leapers Fork, Tennessee, and Calvary Chapel of East Anaheim uh, from Southern California. So I'm, I'm looking forward to those, and, um, <clears throat> and I'm also looking forward to spending some time home right after them with my uh, little boy and um, have Passover here in Israel. Um, I'm planning on shooting um, several of my messages um, in Greece and Turkey, um, and uh, I will keep you updated on, uh, on those and when they will be released. I'm very excited about that. Um, I'm hoping also to go to Jordan and record a message on the tribulation from the area of Petra, and if possible... God willing, I will also go to Egypt um, and record a couple messages there to give clarity and understanding on what happened during the Exodus and what is going to happen also in the future with Egypt, according to the prophet Isaiah and to the prophet Zechariah. Egypt is a prominent player in the end times, um, and I think it's very important that all of us will understand that. Apart from that, I released my uh, tour plan for 2018. I'll be visiting uh, close to, I think, 13 different countries. And bear in mind, January, I already visited two of them in the, the Philippines and in the United States. 
but I'll be visiting new countries such as South Africa, Switzerland, Romania, Austria, and even Slovenia. So I'm very, very excited about those. Um, I'll be returning to Canada. I'll be returning to, um, to um, other countries. And by the way, sorry, Kiwis, I will visit New Zealand this time as well. So uh, thank you again. God bless you from Galilee. It's very stormy outside. It's been raining almost for non-stop for 48 hours, which is a great blessing for us. We really need that rain. I'm getting ready to take my son back to the army after a great weekend that he spent here with us. And uh, keep praying for him, keep praying for his unit, and keep praying for the Israeli soldiers, wherever they are. Thank you again, and God bless you, and Shalom from Galilee. And... Um, Stay uh, posted and uh, stay tuned with more updates to come. God bless you and Shalom from Israel. Bye-bye.